Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. In his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one, your husband. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Yes, here is big news. Listen, everyone. Here's your chance to get a swell new miniature model farm. This complete model farm is made up of 46 detailed scale models and all. That's 46 keen-looking different models of farm buildings, farm equipment, and farm animals. Now for the best news of all. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are offering you this complete Quaker model farm... At no extra cost. You send no money, box tops, or coupons. There's nothing to write in for. There's no waiting. That's right. There's no delay, no waiting. We'll tell you how to get this complete new Quaker model farm just a little bit later in this program. Stand by for details. Wayne Lester was paroled from the Oregon State Penitentiary after serving two years on a robbery charge. When he returned to his home in Portland, he found his sister Sadie in the large living room that was bare except for a couple of suitcases and a small trunk upon which he was sitting. Wayne looked around the empty room, listened momentarily to the workman, and then turned to face his sister. Guess I caused all this, Sadie. I'm afraid you did, Wayne. Why didn't you write and tell me? I was afraid you wouldn't come back to me if I did. If I'd known this had happened, I guess I wouldn't have. When did they foreclose on the place? The day after Dad was buried. That was a month ago. They gave me 30 days to sell the furniture and get out. Mm-hmm. And Dad spent everything he had to get me out of prison. Is that it? Yes, Wayne. He did. And it killed him. All on the kind of me. Oh, don't say that, Wayne. You know Dad had a bad heart. It's... Wasn't your fault? Yes, it was. Maybe I better say it was Red Dunbar's fault. He's the one who got me into trouble. Dad knew that. He said repeatedly that you'd never have gotten into trouble if it hadn't been for keeping Dad company. He was right, Wayne. Uh, well, sis, someday I'll square it with Dad, even if he is gone. How do you mean? I'll find Red Dunbar. And when I do, I'll kill him for what he's cost. Oh, that won't do any good. Oh, Wayne, you can make a man of yourself. All you need is a new start and a new environment. What are you driving at? CDs. What are they? Steamship tickets. Steamship tickets? You and I are leaving Portland tonight for the Yukon Territory. Holy smoke, sis. Have you gone crazy? Well, that's tough country up there. Maybe it'll toughen us both up. I think we need it. Need it? What do you mean? Neither of us has ever done a day's work. I've done plenty in the last two years. I never want to work like that again, sis, and I won't. I think you will, Wayne. You're discouraged now, but... Well, maybe you'll feel different when you get to the Yukon. When Sadie and her brother arrived at Dawson, she realized how inadequate her early training had been. She buried her pride, however, and took a job in the Bonanza restaurant. It was there that Sergeant Preston and his dog, King, came to know her. Sadie was usually cheerful and good-natured. But one day, Sergeant Preston noticed that she seemed worried... Not getting homesick, are you, Sadie? Sergeant, I, I have a little time to spare. We're not busy right now. Do you mind if I sit at your table for a few minutes? Mine? Of course not. Please sit down. <laughs> I've been wanting to talk to someone about a problem I have. Perhaps you can help me. i glad to do what I can. It's about my brother. I don't have to explain to you, I'm sure. I think I understand. He hasn't done a day's work since we came to Dawson. Spends all his time in the Klondike gambling hall. King and I see him at the tables every time we go through here on patrol. Where does he get the money to gamble so much, Sadie? Sometimes he wins, sir. He doesn't win all the time. Oh, of course not. 
I let him have money now and then. Oh? But honestly, Sergeant, he pays back everything he borrows when he gets a lucky sleep. Gambling's no light for a decent man, Sergeant Preston. I agree with him. If only he get a job, go to work to make his living. Isn't there some way to make him realize that gambling isn't right? When a man gets gambling in his blood, it's hard for him to get it out, Sadie. I've known too many gamblers. When he's young, he never gambled before he came up here. Has he ever worked at anything? For two years, just before we came here. Oh, huh? at what? Uh, labor. Hard labor. He doesn't look it, but I take your word for it, Sadie. He's strong and he's healthy. Hard work would do him good. I don't know whether he'll be interested or not, but I just came back from Pelican Creek. They're making a few strikes up there. Not big ones, but big enough to make it worthwhile. I hadn't heard about that. Keep it to yourself for the time being, Sadie. Winter's coming on. I wouldn't want to start a rush up there at this time of the year. But you said Wayne might be interested. He can keep a secret, can he? Yes, he can. Then you want me to tell him about the Pelican Creek strike? Only if he agrees to leave Dawson and go up there to work the creeks. I see what you mean. Oh, thanks a million, Sergeant. I appreciate your trust. Sadie Lester didn't send for her brother Wayne immediately. In fact, she bided her time for several days. Then one evening when Wayne came into the restaurant for supper, she could tell by his manner that his luck had not been good. This was confirmed when he looked at the bill for the meal. You'll have to stick this check on the hook tonight, sis. Broke? Yeah. Sit down, will you? Only for a minute, Wayne. I'm busy. I hate to ask you, but uh, I don't like to ask anyone else. How about letting me have some money? You'll get it back tomorrow. Wayne, I, I've been waiting for this to happen. What do you mean, sis? I'll explain. Ever since we came up here, Wayne... Sadie pulled no punches as she expressed her opinion of gamblers. Wayne stared at her in silence until she finished. So I don't get the money, huh? Not for gambling, you don't. I'll make you a proposition. Proposition I know you won't accept. No? What's here? It involves work. Hard work. Go on. A new strike's been made. Up one of the creeks. I heard about it today. Which one? I promised to keep it a secret. Who told you about it, sis? I can't tell you that. But, Wayne. Yeah? You could get up there before word reaches Dawson in the spring. You could stake out a couple of places. Just a minute, sis. Hold on. <laughs> you don't expect me to leave a hot stove to, to freeze up on one of the creeks, do you? The winter's coming on. Thank you. I... I didn't expect you to, John. You're not man enough to do it. I just wanted to prove that to you. That's all. Wait, sis, listen. I don't want to listen, Wayne. I won't lend you the money for any more gambling. A dog team and a grub stake takes money, a lot of money. I know that. Would you stake me? You know I would. I'll need at least $1,000. You can have it. All right, sis, I'll take you up on your proposition. Tell me where the strike's been made, and I'll go right out and buy the dogs and grub. You buy the dogs and grub first. Here. Here's the money. When you have your dog team and your outfit, I'll tell you. You can keep a secret long enough to get out of Dawson. You won't be running into anyone on the trail to where I'm sent. Wayne Lester hurried out of the Bonanza restaurant and joined the people milling along Dawson's brightly lighted main street. As he leaned forward against the sharp wind, Wayne saw only the moving feet of those ahead of him. It was several minutes before he realized that his eyes were following a pair of feet that moved along with a strange familiarity. And he glanced upward to see if he recognized the man ahead of him. But Wayne saw only the familiar parka of a bearded miner, which meant nothing to him. And he was about to stride abreast of the man for a closer look when... Wayne Lester. Wayne Lester. Yeah? Where you been? You missed the biggest thing ever. Well, how do you mean? Down the Klondike Cafe. A Chichaco hit the house for 20000 You mean he won 20000 Yeah, and he's still playing. <laughs> if he's smart, he'll take what he hit him for and get out. Yeah. Yeah, that would be smart. Thought you'd be interested. Sorry I went there to see it. So long. The informant hurried on down the street, spreading the news as he went. Wayne resumed his pace in the opposite direction, though his steps became more hurried as he neared the Klondike gambling hall. He forgot the man with the familiar footsteps. He forgot his intentions to buy dogs and supplies. One thing burned in his mind, to get back into the game in the Klondike gambling hall. If another man could raid the bank, Wayne could too. When he reached the table, the lucky Chichaco was pushing his pile of chips toward the dealer. I'll cash in and quit for the night, dealer. That's your privilege, mister. Let somebody else have your place. I'll take a seat. 
Deal me in for a thousand dollars worth of chips. I'll get around to you, Wayne, just as soon as I pay off this chachaco. Now, mister, start counting out those chips. As the dealer opened the cash drawer and began to drone the monotonous count, Wayne saw two men, their hands concealed in the pockets of their parkas, approach the table cautiously. Suddenly, they whipped out revolvers, and a heavy voice, which came from directly behind him, and which he seemed to remember, said with steely coolness... All right, gents. Get your hands up. Hey, what is it? Get them up and keep them up. Now, boys, move in and take the cash. Right, hey, come on. Wayne glanced at his own cash on the table, then at the mirror on the wall. The reflection of the same bearded man whose footsteps he had thought familiar... The eyes of the man behind his back met Wayne's eyes in the mirror. And the bearded face broke into a cruel grin of recognition. The face fooled Wayne no longer. It was Red Dunbar. Then, reflected in the mirror, Wayne saw Dunbar bringing a gun around to point at his back. He acted impulsively, throwing himself backward with a sudden violent effort that took Red Dunbar by surprise. Wayne sprawled to the floor as the bullet streaked past his head. He was on his feet with the agility of a cat. Shoot out the lights! In the darkness, Red Dunbar and one of his companions made their escape. The other was found unconscious and captured when candles were lighted in the gambling room. Wayne found his money and tallet left it on the table. He stuffed it into his pocket and hurried into the street. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Now, listen carefully. Yes, listen, here's how you can get the brand new Swell Quaker Model Farm. That's a complete farm in miniature, made up of 46 detail scale models in all. What's more, these different models are yours at no extra cost. And they're yours right away, without delay. And here's what's fun. You build these exciting models yourself. Models like a big red barn with a sliding door. Think of it, you get a big red barn with a sliding door. A windmill that actually turns. These models are really skillfully designed. Think of it. Doors and windows of buildings open and shut. And you get important farm equipment, too, like a tractor. You get everything. Cattle shed, hen house, hired man's house, and even a roadside stand. What's more, these exciting models don't cost a single extra penny. Those come on special new packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Yes, every model comes right on the new packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. There are eight different new packages in all. And you get as many as six different models on a single package. Every package has at least two or more models of farm animals. Animals like Rocky the Rooster. (laughs) Bossy the Cow. (laughs) And Topsy, your own Shetland Pony. Talk about fun. And say, all models are really easy to build, too. They're pre-cut and scored. No paste or glue is necessary, and models stand by themselves. Act fast. Start building your Quaker model farm right away. There's no waiting, nothing to send in, no money, box tops, or coupons. These models come on new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The swell-tasting breakfast cereals shot from guns. And don't forget... Different models come on eight different packages. Each and every package is a gold mine of fun, games, and excitement. And they're waiting for you right now on your grocer's shelf. Ask for Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Only on special new packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice will you find these swell new models. So hurry, there's no delay. You can start building your Quaker model farm right away. Now to continue our story. The following morning, Sergeant Preston and King entered the Bonanza restaurant. And the Mountie was attired in a parka instead of the red-coated uniform which he usually wore when on duty in Dawson. Sadie Lester greeted them cheerfully. And then, noticing the parka, said... You're dressed for traveling. You must have found the trail of the men who tried to rob the Klondike last night. Not yet, Sadie, but I'm starting out to try and pick up their trail. The trail of the two who got away. Wayne told me there were three of them, and one was captured. That's right. According to witnesses, it was Wayne who upset the holdup. I wanted to talk to him about it. Upset the holdup? Why, Sergeant, you must be mistaken. Wayne wasn't in the Klondike at the time. He wasn't? No. 
He heard about it while he was over at Pete Faraday's place, buying a dog team and supplies. Supplies and a dog team? For what? You remember telling me about the strike that had been made up on the Pelican Creek? Yes. Well, I told Wayne about it. And he agreed to go there and go to work if I would stake him. So last night I gave him money. He bought a team and supplies and started out. Are you sure he did that? Sergeant Preston, I saw him. He came here soon after midnight with his sled and team. He said he was leaving at once for Pelican Creek. I asked him to wait until morning, but he said he didn't want anyone to see him leaving town. Why not? You remember you said for me to keep it a secret. Wayne thought somebody might suspect what he was up to, and it might start a stampede. Oh, yes, I see. <laughs> he didn't want me to, but I walked to the south edge of town with him when he started out. The south edge of town? Yeah. Pelican Creek's north of here. Oh, of course, but Wayne was being very cautious. He planned to circle the town. I see. By the way, Sadie. Yeah? You and Wayne are from Oregon, aren't you? Yes, we are. Did you ever know a man named Dunbar? Red Dunbar? Then you do know him. Yes. Why? He was the leader of the men who tried to rob the Klondike last night. Are you sure, Sergeant? Yes, witnesses have positively identified his photograph, which we have in the police files. He's grown a beard since coming north, but there's no doubt of his identity. Then that proves what I said a few moments ago. What's that? Wayne was not in the Klondike when it was robbed. Well, how does that prove it, Sadie? Because Wayne has sworn that he would kill Red Dunbar on sight. Had he been in the Klondike at the time, he would have killed Red. Or been killed. Why was he determined to kill Dunbar? Wayne had a reason. A good reason. I'd rather not go into it, Sergeant. Well, that's all right. I only hope you'd get Dunbar. If Wayne knew he was in the Yukon, he'd not sleep until he'd run him down and killed him. I don't want my brother hung for murder. I can understand that. Well, King, old fellow, if we're going to pick up Dunbar's trail, we'd better get going. For a few moments during his conversation with Sadie Lester, Sergeant Preston had been mystified. He knew from statements of witnesses that Wayne Lester had been in the Klondike gambling hall at the time of the attempted robbery. Why had Wayne traveled south? The Mountie found the answer on the trail. The crisp snow still retained the imprints made the night before. The marks of Wayne's sled and dogs were clearly discernible, and so were the footprints of two men going south. In places, overlapping marks told Sergeant Preston that Wayne had been following the others. In some way, he must have learned the direction taken by Dunbar and his companion. Sadie's brother was not headed for Pelican Creek. He obviously had no intention of going on a search for gold. Instead, Wayne Lester was on a manhunt. Red Dunbar and his companion traveled hard all day, putting many snow-packed miles between themselves and the city of Dawson. It was almost nightfall when they drew up in front of a cabin. Red opened the door and peered inside. Well, Steve, just as I left it last spring. What's the idea of shutting the door, Red? Let's get inside out of this wind. Ah, not now, we don't. Taking our chances. If we are being trailed, I'll find it out and do something about it. Oh. Look over yonder, just behind the shack. See that creek? Yeah. Right now, it's frozen over. Yeah, it's clear ice. The wind's kept it clear of snow. That creek runs south in the direction we've been traveling for about two miles. Then it turns. If we keep going, we'll come right up to it. Anyone trail us will see our footprints leave the ice. Then they'll lose our trail. Uh, they won't know which way we've traveled, That's huh? That's right. We'll hit the ice and follow the creek right back here to the shack. Hey, ice savvy, Red. If anyone's following us, we'll go right past the shack. And we'll know it. We'll know it. And if necessary, we can do something about it. Let's push on. Red Dunbar and his companion continued on their way until they reached the frozen creek. In the meantime, Wayne had reached the cabin. He was cold and tired and decided to stop and rest before continuing along the trail of the men he sought. He was there when Red and Steve returned along the creek and stopped behind the lighted cabin. Now, listen, Steve. You leave the creek, circle a shack to the trail that goes by the front. When you get there, the dogs will start barking. Yeah? Whoever's inside the cabin will get outside to see what's making the dogs bark. Don't give me a chance to go in the back door without being spotted. Oh, I get you, Red. You'll be waiting for him when he comes back into the cabin, huh? That's it. Now get going. Right. Wayne Lester heard a commotion in front of the cabin. What's the matter with those doors? Go out there and have a look. Quiet down, you! Quiet down! Shut up! He looked around, but in the darkness could see nothing that might have disturbed the door. Shut up, you noisy curs! What's the matter with you? Did you catch the son of a wolf or something? Now, shut up! 
Get him up. Fred Dunbar. That's right, Wayne. Your old friend from the States. Where'd you come from? Slipped in the back door while you were looking out the front. I reckon you're curious about what disturbed your dogs, eh? Yeah. Well, it's my friend Steve. And it sounds like he's disturbing the dogs again. You don't know, Steve, but you'll meet him right quick. Now, here he is now. Steve! This is Wayne Lester. Hey, I've heard of him. Draw your gun and keep him covered, Steve. You right. crooks, you Shut will. up! You think you could follow our trail and capture us and make a hero of yourself? <laughs> I outsmarted you in the States, Wayne. And I'll outsmart you here. What are you going to do, Dunbar? Take your gun, maybe. Now, turn around and keep your hands up. There. That'll do. There. Oh. What's the idea of slugging him, Red? Try to knock him cold, that's what. Take a look at him. He's out like a light. You sure let him have it, Red. Yeah. It's 30 below outside. Come on, pick up his feet. I'll huh? the shoulders. Oh, get it, Red. Why don't you shoot him and be done with it? Steve, the Mounties up here in the Yukon have a way of dealing fast with murders. I don't aim to be hung. Robbery, that's one thing. Murder's different. Yeah, I know, but this... Well, get this guy in his own sled. Start his dogs off down the trail. Before Wayne regains consciousness, he'll freeze to death. No doubt of it, Red, but it just... It won't look like murder, and nobody can blame us for it. It'll look like he just plain froze. I hope he don't come, too. He won't. Now, lift him up and let's get him on the sled. <laughs> Sergeant Preston, the great dog king, had been traveling since early morning and had maintained a steady ground-covering pace with only the briefest of pauses. Experienced as they were, the Mountie and his dog were able to move nearly twice as fast as Wayne Lester. It was soon after Wayne, unconscious, had been loaded onto his sled and sent along the trail when Sergeant Preston approached the lonely cabin and saw a lighted window. But one thing puzzled the Mountie. There was no dog sled in sight. He halted for a moment. I can't understand it, King. There should be dogs in a sled in front of the cabin, but there aren't. No noise, boy. Be quiet until we take a look. Come on. They moved silently toward the cabin, and when they reached it, the Mountie cautiously looked through the window. He saw Red Dunbar and Steve Kirk seated before a glowing stove, eating rations that they had taken from their packs. It was evident that they were unaware of his and King's presence. Instead of entering the cabin immediately, the Mountie examined the tracks of dogs, men, and sled that showed quite plainly in the glow of the light from the window. Then he spoke low to his dog. Dunbar and his friend inside came, but Wayne Lester's not. <laughs> Quiet, boy. I'll do exactly as I tell you. Follow the tracks of the sled. Find Wayne Lester and bring him here. Sergeant Preston watched the dog nuzzle the fresh sled tracks in the snow, saw him spring away into the darkness and disappear. Then, drawing his gun, he moved toward the closed door. Hey. Don't move, either of you. Come on, what do you want, busting in here like this? You know why I'm here, Dunbar. You robbed the Klondike gambling hall last night. I arrest you both in the name of the Queen. You got the wrong men, Marnie. We never done it. There are plenty of witnesses to say you're dead. Now keep your hands up while I disarm you. Meanwhile, the great dog king had sped over the snow and overtaken the dog team. The dog saw him and paused to fight, but King soon convinced them he was master of the situation. As they covered in their traces, he sniffed the sled and the still form that lay upon it, and he knew that something which he could not understand had happened to Wayne Lester. Nudging the man failed to waken him. Then King remembered that Sergeant Preston had given him an order. Find Wayne Lester and bring him back. He turned his attention to the dog team again. King quickly turned the dogs to the team. Then acting as a leader, he directed them over the back trail toward the cabin of Sergeant Preston. <laughs> Meanwhile, Red Dunbar and Steve Kirk were disarmed, and Sergeant Preston faced them with a question that took them by surprise. Did you kill Wayne Lester? Who? You know, and so does Dunbar. Did you kill him? I don't know what you're talking about. Never heard of anybody named Lester. He stopped at this cabin less than half an hour ago. Oh, you're crazy. Nobody was here when Steve and me arrived, and nobody came by since. Except you. All right, have it your way. I'll prove you're lying. Come on. Where are we going? Back to Dawson? Not immediately. We'll find Wayne Lester first. Hey, who's that coming with dogs? I think you'll know him when he gets here. As the three stood just outside the doorway... In the glow of the light that fell upon the snow, Red Dunbar gave Steve Kirk a knowing look. 
They saw the faint outline of dogs and sled as they raced into the circle of light and approached the cabin. The great dog king keeping them in line. They saw the prostrate form of Wayne Lester on the sled. Oh, yeah, Husky. Oh, yeah. Good boy, King. So you didn't kill him. We never saw these dogs before. I'll soon know whether you did or not. It looks like he's dead to me. Yeah, he must have frozen at that. I'll see. Sergeant Preston, his gun still held in his hand, moved to the side of the sled. Red Dunbar saw the Mountie lean over to examine the still form. He nodded at Steve Kirk, and both sprang forward at the same time. Get him, Steve! Grab his gun, Red! Oh, you don't! Hold him, Steve! I got him! Get his gun! King Hurry saw his up. master fall backward over the sled as Steve and Red rushed him. He saw Steve Kirk grab the Mountie as Red fought to get possession of the gun. Like a flash, he sprang to the fight, slashing, biting, tearing with bared fangs. Get your I'll get you, Mountie! Higher! Oh, he's killing me, Stay with him, King. I'll take care of this one. King's charge had thrown Red to the ground. The great dog stood over him threateningly while Sergeant Preston dealt with Steve. I'll hold you. Get him away. Down, King. Down, boy. I have him covered. Get up, both of you. Don't shoot, Money. Steve, I'm getting it. Why don't you keep your eye on that dog? Why didn't you? All right, that's enough. Take that man from the sled and get him inside by the fire. He's still alive. I told you to watch him, Red. Did you take your eye on that dog? When Wayne Lester regained consciousness inside the cabin, he saw Red Dunbar and Steve sitting glumly in the corner with their hands tied and King on guard. Wayne told Sergeant Preston the story of his life, how he had served a prison term because of Dunbar and his vow to get revenge. The law will deal with these two, Wayne. We'll take them back to Dawson in the morning to face trial for robbery and attempted murder. Sergeant Preston, I... I told my sister I was on my way to Pelican Creek... I'd like to keep my word. I'm glad to hear that, Wayne. King and I can take these prisoners back without you. You, uh, go on to Pelican Creek. Keep all those promises you made your sister. Thanks, Sergeant. If it hadn't been for you and King, I... Well, I... I'd have been frozen to death by this time. We can thank King for turning your dogs back. Oh, King knows we're talking about him. See how he's watching us? <laughs> oh, thanks, King, old fellow. Yes, King... Thanks to the way you handled Wayne's dogs and then pitched in to help me, the case against Dunbar and Kirk is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. Hurry, hurry, hurry to your grocer. Look for the special new model farm packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Remember, there are eight different new packages. And you get as many as six different exciting models of farm buildings, farm equipment, and farm animals on a single package. There's no waiting, no extra cost. So shake a leg. Get in on the fun. Start building yourself a swell model farm today. Tomorrow, sure. Remember, 46 keen detail scale models are yours now at your grocer's. And they're yours for the asking when you ask for delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of the Black Husky. A series of accidents had happened to young Bob Johnson, whose devoted companion was the Black Husky. Accidents that I knew were clever and deliberate attempts to kill the boy. King and I had to try a daring and dangerous trap to expose the killers. Be sure to hear this exciting story Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.